Thank you for tuning in to another video from Vigilate at Orate. This is Tyler Nethercott. And I wanted to highlight a, an article that was posted recently on the SSPX US website. Uh, before I do that, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel and uh, like this video if you agree with the comments or the content. And if you do not, or if you do, please feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to get back to you either with an email or another video response. I welcome feedback. This is intended to be an opportunity for conversation and logical thinking, and I hope that's what you'll find in here. So the SSPX posted a, an article called Satire, A New Way to Combat the Crisis. You can see the link up above. I also post it in the uh, video notes. You should also be able to find it if you just go to the website in the next few days or if you just Google SSPX and satire. I'd imagine that would come up. So basically the gist of this article, for the most part, is that they're talking about recent satirical uh, things making their way into the public. And there's some of these posters showing up around Rome, sort of mocking Francis. And, uh, and then recently... In addition of uh, L'Osservatore Romano came out, which was basically a fake issue of the the popular newspaper, Roman newspaper, uh, you know, supposedly representing responses by Pope Francis to the to the dubia, and uh, and it had a whole bunch of elaborate stuff woven into it. And so this SSPX article gets into that, and uh, and you can see this particular you know satire. They say, Ah, Francis, you have intervened. In congregations, removed priests, decapitated the Order of Malta, and the Franciscans of the Immaculate, ignored cardinals, but where is your mercy? And, well, frankly, that's that's a valid question. I think it's something that's on the minds of many people. So you can go ahead and pause the video here. I'm not going to read through this, and you can always read the article too. But this is the section in particular that I'd like to provide some commentary on here. And uh, so just the first sentence, I'll get into it here. Satire may be mad and anarchic, but it presupposes an admitted superiority in certain things over others. It presupposes a standard, wrote Chesterton. So the author of this article is quoting Chesterton uh, to kind of lead into the support that, that satire presupposes some kind of superiority over somebody else. So here's a different quote. In former days, the heretic was proud of not being a heretic. Today, he says, with a conscious laugh, I suppose I am very heretical, and looks around for applause. That was also Chesterton. Does everybody remember when Pope Francis on an airplane, like he seems to like to do, whimsically said, I feel like saying something that might sound controversial, or even heretical, perhaps. And then he looked around and looked for laughter. I think a few people, it was reported, even did laugh, but they wanted to know what he would say. And they all applauded when he gave his little ecumenical spiel saying that we're all one, that, that basically there's only there's only one. He made sort of an allusion to the devil without mentioning the devil specifically. There's one who knows that we are all one, all united, Protestants and all kinds of other denominations. And he went on to make this, this basically heretical ecumenical statement that we don't have anything separating us, that we're all just one with our uh, heretical brethren. And of course, the world loves to hear that. So I think the Chesterton quote that they provided, anyway, it just jumped out to me that there's another from the book Heretics by Chesterton, uh, where, you know, kind of seems to point at Francis. So the SSPX article goes on. And again, we could laugh too if the subject was not so dramatic, if the person and function of the Pope were not involved, and if all this was not an expression of the chaos in Rome... And yet here we have Francis, everybody's probably seen this, really making a fool of himself more than anybody else could. Uh, the self-proclaimed you know, selfie pope, the first ever to take selfies with, with the people, um, regularly just makes a fool of himself. And so we don't really need to worry about you know, laughing or saying, oh, are we, are we making a fool? Are we exposing our father's nakedness? Uh, he's running around naked. He's, he's running around saying, look at me, I'm naked and drunk. So there's this section that says, is this a proper way to combat the crisis in the church? Okay, that's a valid question. But from here, things get kind of dicey. 
And really what I think you're going to find is there's a paragraph inserted in here with what seems to be an alternative agenda, and it does not fit within the context of this larger article. So further, and as we have touched on before, we cannot support this passive aggressive and disrespectful method of correcting the sovereign pontiff. So one of the things, as we have touched on before, if you go to the article, there's actually nothing linked in that text to any other articles where they've touched on this before. I just thought that was kind of odd. Uh, typically, you know, good journalism, you're going to link to something else where you've said that before. So maybe somebody else can put that in the comments if they're aware of other places where they've talked about how the use of satire is not appropriate. And they go on, we cannot support this passive aggressive and disrespectful method of correcting the sovereign pontiff. That's very strange. Uh, very strange indeed, because if you go over to the Angelus online.org and you can see the link above I, I know this looks choppy but i posted up there you'll find a may 2002 issue of the angelus uh publication the title of which is rome the sspx campos assisi etc and if you scroll 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 down oh, quite a ways you'll find this letter from the archbishop that says most holy father please take a look at these drawings since you are deaf to the anguished appeals that we have addressed to you with filial respect, at least deign not to offend, uh, to not offend publicly and gravely against God's first commandment. The salvation of your soul is at stake. Preach Jesus Christ as the apostles did, even at the cost of their lives. This is the fervent and filial wish of those who still remain Catholic. Signed, Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre. So, a couple of things here before I jump to the next slide, because I'm going to show you the drawings that he references here that were published that were done by the sspx and sent to the pope and that were published again in 2002 by the angelus online look at the tone that the archbishop takes with the with the pope here i mean th the stakes were so high just before assisi that he knew it was going to happen that he says you know you're deaf to the anguished appeals. This, this is a pretty firm tone, and even firmer, I would say, than the, the recent dubia, which everybody's been praising as this supreme act of courage. So here's the, the drawings. And these are, again, from the SSPX. You can see over on the left side, the International Congress of Religions. This is a drawing. Then here's our Lord trying to come to this Assisi gathering, you know, and Pope John Paul II says, no, no, there's no room for you here. You're not ecumenical. And then later, uh, presumably, we would see on the right, I am John Paul II, the ecumenical Pope. And our Lord responds, I'm sorry, but there's only one religion here. Go and look elsewhere. And these devils are whistling, hey, buddy, ecumenists this way, for all the gods of the Gentiles are devils, Psalm 95. That's a true quote from the Bible. So, this was put out. This is satire. By definition, this is satire. And this was sent by the Archbishop to the Pope. And so if I just page backwards, we cannot support this passive-aggressive and disrespectful method of correcting the sovereign pontiff. This is far more satirical than the, the things being anonymously posted around Rome, which aren't even really being sent. They're not even really a, a method of correction. They're more just calling out a glaring observation. So I can't help when I read this article but think that's hip hypocritical. That's hypocritical. A person who puts on the false appearance of virtue or religion, a person who acts in contradiction to his or her stated beliefs or feelings. This is the first offense of hypocrisy in this article. Second, while privacy and confidentiality are not without their place, hiding behind a computer screen has unfortunately become an accepted method of public discourse. So this is still further from the article. So let's touch on this. While privacy and confidentiality are not without their place. Again, kind of a weird statement here. They don't really say when privacy and confidentiality have their place. There's no, there's no clarification. There's no distinction here. So that would be nice. Uh, maybe they'll post something else, or, or maybe whoever wrote this article will come across this video and 
and be gracious enough to clarify some of the things that uh, jumped out at me here. So again, I would say, when when is it okay to have uh, this privacy and, and confidentiality? Hiding behind a computer screen has unfortunately become an accepted method of public discourse. So we have to ask ourselves why, right? Why, why has hiding behind a computer screen become this common method of public discourse? Well, certainly there are people who like to get on Facebook or like to get on social media, all these different methods, and just you know randomly post whatever they, they think and hit send and not think twice about it. And they don't want to actually have any conversations. They're just hiding behind a keyboard. So I, I can understand what the author is getting at there, and I would certainly agree with that. But let's take this a step further and say, why might some other people uh, specifically within the context of traditional Catholicism, admonishing the Pope, the the concerns about things going on within the SSPX, and so on and so forth, be hiding behind a computer? Well, I would think one for fear of reprisal, for fear of being, you know, scolded, basically, uh, fear of persecution or being banned from a society chapel. I know that there have been people who have been asked not to come back. The society chapels for asking too many questions, for being accused of, you know, stirring up set of contest things or or whatever, um, or for fear of one's priest getting into trouble and maybe being accused of of fomenting chaos and murmurings at the church. So, you know, you might worry about that. So if I'm saying something, is is that going to mean the 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 district is going to come back and accuse my priest of of encouraging that type of behavior or not adequately suppressing it? And so people hide. So somebody might go anonymous. They say, well, I can't put my name behind this because, because I'm afraid. It's just a thought, but I'm going to keep going. I'm going to take this a step further in a moment. The author says, letters sent without signatures, anonymous emails, and posts on websites using pseudonyms are not done by men of fortitude and conviction in the truth. Wait a minute. If you go over to the article when you're done watching this video or hit pause and scroll to the top, you'll see there's the title, Satire, A New Way to Combat the Crisis, February 16, 2017, posted by District of the USA. No name. Nobody's writing their name on this. Nobody's stamping their name on this. Now, I suppose, representing the district, we could say Father Wegner. I don't think he wrote this. In fact, I'm almost certain that he did not write this. Typically, when something comes out from him, he puts his name on it, like his letter to friends and benefactors and other things like that. So this doesn't... Anybody seeing this, this is the second offense, right? Let's go back to that. Letters sent without signatures, anonymous emails, and posts on websites using pseudonyms. This isn't even a pseudonym. This is just... There's nobody... We don't know who's writing this. We don't... We can't... There's no way to respond. There's no way for me to send private correspondence to this person. I've sent emails over to the general contact information for the SSPX website and don't get a response. I've sent them about concerns on the site and content that's on there, and I've also sent them about other things that just have to do with general questions, and I don't get answers. I don't know who's manning that inbox, but they don't get back to me. And I think I even got an auto-reply that said something like, we'll get back to you, but we're not really sure when something so that that's hypocritical this is whether intentionally or not somebody should have caught that uh and said you know that's a second offense within this article so they close it out by saying they are the acts of cowards who like the mythological figure eris whoever's ever heard of eris uh maybe i'm not up on my mythology but i did look it up uh only seek to attain their goals however noble they may be, through chaos. These are brooms. And that statement, my friends, is a sweeping generalization, a horribly sweeping generalization, that they're applying intent and malice and assuming that they understand what people intend to an entire group of people who write anonymously and submit anonymous letters. And don't forget, as at one point they said that this confidentiality and anonymity have their place, but they didn't clarify when, and then they come out here and they say, these are the acts of cowards. St. Alphonsus Liguori, the doctor of moral theology for the Holy Catholic Church, said, it is a grave fault without sufficient reason 
to doubt the innocence of another. It is graver still to entertain a real suspicion. It is always safer and more in harmony with charity to think well of others and to refrain from all unfavorable judgments and suspicions. Charity thinketh no evil. So let's ask ourselves, what might be a more charitable assumption here? Well, one thing that comes to mind for me immediately, it's something I've thought about whether or not I should put my name on things or my voice or my face publicly, is that I've got a public, I've got a job. I have to provide for my family. I have a career. Anytime you put your name out there in the internet, out in the interwebs, you are, are risking that you could get yourself into some trouble. Employers go out and they look for these things today. You know, they're, they're, they're looking for, for what kind of dirt can we dig up? Is this person a, a reputable person or the type of character that we want in our company? And we all know the labels that come with being an authentic traditional Catholic like zealot, you know, overly political, stirring up dissensions, uh, radical, reactionary, whatever they might throw at us, bigoted, the list goes on, all the things that our Lord said we would be called if we truly represent him. So somebody goes out and Googles Tyler Nethercott, or they Google somebody else's name who's written things, uh, you know, let's say uh, John Venari, Michael Matt, you know, Louis Vrecchio. Those names get Googled. If those guys were out looking for employment, somebody conceivably – you know, there's, there's discrimination laws, but still, somebody could just say, yeah, we're not going to have anything to do with these guys. Isn't that a more charitable assumption than, than, than saying that these are cowards who, by the way, uh, are not done with any fortitude or conviction in the truth, just cowards trying to seek their goals through chaos? I'm just, I'm just going to put that out there. So there's some serious confusion here. Again, that section did not, it seems like they're trying to just subtly, passive aggressively, you might say, uh, get a different agenda across and a different message. But I, I kind of want to ask myself here. I mentioned, I think there's fear. I think there's confusion. I think there's, there are, I think there are murmurings. I think there are conversations that happen all over the place, the U.S., around the world. So what's the remedy? Open the lines of communication. That's all that has to happen here. They've got to open the lines of communication. Um, we know what we've heard before, which is this is not a democracy. The SSPX is not a democracy. This isn't run by the people. It's it's a church or you know society that's that's hierarchical uh, and you know hierarchical and appropriately set up as such. We have no obligation to disclose uh, or to publish the conversations and, and plans and things that are going on, and yet. Uh, you know, basically they're saying, we want obedience. You just need to be obedient. You need to be obedient, obedient, obedient. You need to trust, be obedient. Don't, you know, don't question the, the superiors or their intent. This is my simple response to that. And I think it is really, really relevant. Fathers, provoke not your children to indignation, lest they be discouraged. St. Paul in his epistle to the Colossians, chapter 3, verse 21 there's a book about parenting that says that fathers ought not to be, uh, it's, it's a Catholic book, it says the father ought not to be a milk toast, which is kind of a wet blanket, uh, dud, you know, overly, overly nice uh, to his children, but nor should he be a Simon Legree, if I'm remembering these terms correctly. And a Simon Legree is like the type that would just want to, want to, you know, whip his kid for doing anything wrong. He trips and, you know, uh, hits the door against the wall, whip him, you know. Uh, and and that's, the, that's the parent that demands obedience constantly. And what he does is he provokes his children to indignation. And the book says as much. They won't respect you. They'll, they'll stop respecting anything that you say. They'll stop being able to trust you. Obedience, you know, people who should be obeyed are the ones who who, who, who merit obedience, the ones who uh, act with integrity and openness and love for their children. And that's all we're asking for. We just want to know with certainty that we're not going to be thrust back into the conciliar wolves 
so that we and our children and our spouses are going to be consumed. And, it, and we, we're afraid of it happening slowly. You know, I'm not anonymous. This is not an anonymous message. Uh, this is a public message for anybody to watch. And uh, again, I would welcome commentary and thoughts on this. But I would really like to suggest two things to the bishops. Uh, and this would be to all four bishops. Uh, well, I guess there's more now. But this would let's call it the original four, the original band of brothers. Bishop Fillet, Bishop Tissier de Malloray, Bishop de Galaretta, Bishop Williamson, and to any other bishop watching this, somebody please resist Peter to the face, Francis to the face. He has to be resisted publicly. It has to happen. It, it's, it's so far beyond the point of respect. You know, I've used the analogy before. I've thought of this analogy before. If, if somebody runs into a movie theater with a machine gun and just starts mowing people down, you, you stop them, period. You stop them. You resist them. You have to because they're killing people and it's happening in front of you. And that's what, that's what Francis is doing daily. He's, he's destroying souls. He's leading souls to hell in droves. I mean, literally, when we think of the, the, the apparitions or the, the prophecies that in Teresa of Avila and Fatima, where they say they see souls falling into hell like snowflakes, just, just souls, hundreds of thousands, that's happening daily. And the longer we wait and the quieter we are collectively, but especially the bishops and the cardinals around the world, the more souls are being lost every day. Another day goes by. Another, however many, you know, hundreds of thousands of people fall into hell because Francis is telling them things that are not true, telling them that they can go on living sinful lives. Stand up. That's it. I, and I say that this is truly in all, in all respect, in all love. Somebody stand up. Go to Rome. Go to St. Peter's Square. Run around like a raving lunatic. I don't care. What would, you know... It just, it doesn't take a rocket science here. Romanitas, be damned. Put it out the window. We've got to stop him. He's like a raving lunatic running around, acting like the papacy is just playtime and making up his own rules and spouting out the doctrines of the Antichrist. And other people recognize it. Protestants recognize it. The atheists recognize it. That's not Catholicism. And they're laughing. And they're mocking us. So please, 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 please. We don't care about a deal. Go admonish him. Tell him to stop. We don't, we don't need this, this recognition from Rome. The second suggestion here, this is the last thing I'm going to say, is back to the open lines of communication, is can we, you know, can the society create some kind of like a, a radio replies, a drop box. If you have a question or concern, submit it here. Submit it in writing. Better yet, submit a video or your voice recording and put your name on it. We're only taking you know, public requests, not anonymous ones because we're not going to get into that. We'd like to be able to respond to you privately first and maybe even submit it publicly if we think that it's something that we're hearing you know, a question to a lot. Can, can we get this? But it's got to be like published, you know, because not everybody has access to to emailing, you know, Bishop Fillet or emailing uh, these these people directly. And we ask our priests, we ask our priors, we ask the district superiors these questions. And I'm sorry, but they, I don't think, no, I don't think that it's not that they don't want to tell us. You know, a lot of times they don't know, and so this this has to be changed. Otherwise, the murmurings and the rumblings will continue. And I, 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 I don't think that's the fault of the people. I think that's the children being provoked to indignation and, and fear and uncertainty. And a good doctor, a good pastor recognizes those things and, and the, the reason for the symptoms. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. St. Padre Pio, pray for us. St. John Vianney, pray for us.